our friend, the Reverend, the Reverend, uh, Reverend Dr. <laughs> Janine Burns. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. I'm always delighted to be here in person at the New Thought Spiritual Community of Eastern Long Island in the beautiful town of Watermill in Southampton Township on Long Island. So I'd like to welcome everybody who's on the Zoom meeting today, Facebook Live, and anybody who's watching on YouTube. And I want to give a special shout out to those who are joining us for the first time today. My topic today is consciousness is everything. Firstly, though, I thought it important to review the fundamental principles of what is known as new thought or practical spirituality. And so the fundamental principle of new thought is that there's one ultimate loving energy that is present in all of creation. And there's many names for this power, the universe, God, spirit, source, infinite intelligence, or the creator of all that is. And it is this God power that is in and through all of creation, and it is this God power that is in and through you and me. Science has now proved this theory. I recently saw a great uh, TikTok video that proved scientifically that we are divine spiritual beings. Have you heard of Greg Braden? Oh, good. He's the author of The Isaiah Effect, Decoding the Lost Science of Prayer and Prophecy. And Greg Braden has written 12 award-winning books, and they've been translated into 40 languages. And in this video I saw, it was very exciting because he ultimately said that God is encoded in our DNA. God is encoded in our DNA. And he said that our DNA holds a message. And what he had done was he had researched into one of the oldest and most mysterious spiritual texts. It's called the Sefer Yitzchorah. It had only been translated into English once. And Braden said that every single alphabet that has ever been known to exist has always has a number that's linked to the letter that it represents. So what he did was he took the alphabet and he replaced the elements of the DNA with those alphabets. And when he did it, what he said was that the DNA began to read as you would read letters in a sentence in a page upon a book. And so when he replaced those letters with the periodic table and he began reading the text, the very first sentence in every strand of DNA says the words, God eternal within the body. How remarkable is that? Isn't that amazing? God eternal within the body. I really love that science is proving the fundamental truths that we teach in New, New Thought. The words God eternal within the body is literally stamped on our DNA. And I love the acronym for DNA, Divine Nature Always. In studying New Thought, we learn that we are spiritual beings having a physical human experience. We learn that we have the awesome power to create, and we do so with our thinking. We learn that whatever thoughts we entertain enough and vividly enough in the surface mind go into the deeper mind and the subconscious mind, and through the law of mind, which is also called the law of attraction, the law of the circle, we draw and attract people, circumstances, and events into our lives which correspond to these subconscious thought patterns. And practical spirituality also teaches much about consciousness. And consciousness is everything. Consciousness is everything. Consciousness can be defined as the totality of our beingness that we bring to the table of our lives. It includes our thoughts, our feelings, our beliefs, our values, our attitudes, our words, our actions and reactions. This is our consciousness. Whenever I give a talk, I always ask the universe, I ask my God power, what should I teach? And sometimes I asked for weeks, and this was one of the times I asked for weeks because when I heard what I was supposed to teach, 
I thought, Ooh, are you sure about that? Because I'm going to talk about a little touchy subject today. And so what really gave me the impetus was a little divine synchronicity when I read a quote from the Reverend Iker Coder. Do you know Reverend Ike? Reverend Ike was in New York City for many years. He was the money minister. I worked for Reverend Ike. I gave many, many talks for him. And Reverend Ike used to say, consciousness is the only currency. Consciousness is the only currency. So, of course, that made me think of money. And then in thinking of money, I started thinking about people have issues with money. We, we, we're taught... Um, Money doesn't grow on trees. Money is the root of all evil and on and on. Then I thought about the T word. The T word, I call it the T word because some people consider it a curse. The T word is tithing. And I have a little ministerial confession. I fudged a little bit on the title because I didn't want to scare anybody away today. And I find that people get really weirded out. And they even shut down when you talk about money or you talk about tithing. Negative feelings and connotations abound, even just around the word. People's defenses go up, and many people run away mentally and emotionally when the word tithe is mentioned. So I invite you to stay very present during this talk. But first, I want to tell you a joke. And uh, let's see. There were two men who were shipwrecked on this island. And the minute they got to the island... One of them started screaming and yelling, we're going to die. We're going to die. There's no food. There's no water. We are going to die. And the second man was propped up against the tree, hanging out, all sorts of relaxed and calm. And it drove the first man crazy. And he said, don't you understand? We are going to die. And the second man said, you don't understand. I make $100,000 a week. And the first man looked at him like he was crazy. Who cares that you make $100,000 a week? What difference does it make? We're on an island. We have no food. We have no water. We are going to die. And the second man answered very calmly, you don't get it. I make $100,000 a week. I tithe. My pastor will find me. <laughs> They're going to come find him. So what exactly is tithing? I'd like to dispel some of the myths about it today. Tithing is a spiritual practice just as much as is prayer, meditation, and practicing forgiveness. Tithing is giving 10% of all we receive and all that we are to the source or sources of our spiritual inspiration and nourishment. Now, you consistently give to the source of sources where you receive your spiritual inspiration or spiritual food. Now, spiritual food is that which inspires you. It lifts you up. It, it reminds you who you are of your spiritual nature. It gives you a spiritual boost. You have a feeling of a hope and a feeling of inspiration. Catherine Ponder, a unity minister, I see some heads nodding, prolific author on the topic of prosperity. And she said a lot of people have a psychological block against tithing because so many theologians have stressed what tithing would do for the church rather than what it would do for the individual. Now, if you want true prosperity, you must put God first in your finances. And it's by putting God first in your finances that you acknowledge that God is your source. And by acknowledging that God is your source, you develop a true abundance consciousness. I remember when I first began tithing, I thought it was irresponsible of me to tithe because I was not making very much money. Ministers just in our society, it's not like, you know, sports players or et cetera. They just don't make a lot of money. And I needed to buy eyeglasses and wearing contacts, but I have thick lenses and the thicker the lens the more expensive the eyeglasses and I and I remember what I learned about tithing that when we tithe we'll have abundance and it's the only place in the Bible that God says put me to the test the only place check it out for yourself look at Malachi 310 where God says to us bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now Herewith, say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, 
that there shall not be room to receive. So don't overthink it. Don't analyze it. Don't try to work it into your budget. As Nike says, just do it. Then stand on the promise and watch with wonder as the windows of heaven open up for you. And for me, I decided to tithe, even though I didn't think I could afford it. I was like, okay, whatever, but, you know, I want to be, you know, I was in ministerial school. I want to be a minister. I've got to practice what I'm teaching, right? So I did. And it was less than two weeks later that I had a job with an optometrist in Westbury, Dr. <laughs> Leon Gordon. I was hired as an optical stylist, and I was a really good stylist. I could look at the rack, and that was the first pair of glasses I pulled off, you bought, and then I learned to make it the third pair because people don't like to buy the first pair. But I had a skill for it. And what was so cool, I was so excited, and I became a true believer in tithing because what came with the job is that you got all your eyewear at wholesale cost. And so as I gave consistently, it was the consistent giving that I opened up the way to receive consistently. New Thought teaches that God is all that is and that God is our unlimited source and supply and we can trust and rely on this source. And the interesting thing about giving and receiving is that we must first give to receive, which is by the way, all spiritual principles are like that. It seems a little weird. It seems counterintuitive, you know, and the way the ego works is the ego wants to receive and then give, the human nature. But giving begets giving. There's a constant activating of the law of the circle, the law of attraction when we are giving. And the challenge is from the human aspect of ourself that says, no, 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 no. I'm going to wait till I receive. I'm not going to, I'm not going to give. I want to, I want to receive first. It doesn't work like that. You must give first and then you'll receive. The Bible says, give and you shall receive in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, multiplied and running over. It doesn't say receive and then give a little. It says, as you give, you will receive multiplied. The act of giving increases your resources. Absolutely increase it. And there's so much power in being a consistent giver in every area of your life. Every area of your life. Tithe of your time, of your talent, of your treasure, of who you are. Now, it takes trust to do it, but as you're willing to embrace giving, you will be richly prospered. And we're told, as you give, you will receive. So give with like a joyous spirit. You know, think, what's the energy you're giving your gift? Are you giving begrudgingly? But what's the mindset behind giving? Make it one of joy. Make it, you know, hey, I'm, I'm making a difference here. If you decide to give to this spiritual community, I'm making a difference. And so I invite you to really look about what is your attitude there and give loving and joyingly with no strings attached Relief your gift freely with no expectations of something in return. That's kind of a difficult thing, too, because, well, I gave to you. They didn't give them back to me. You see, when you give, to the, you give, you're giving to the universe, you never know where your good is going to come back. You have no idea how your good is, good, good is going to come back. But it's from consistent tithing. And so... We, as we relief our gift freely and give no strings attached, we're in the right mindset. So when I was, I used to be a pastor, I don't know if you know that, many years ago, I, I, <laughs> I had a very happening, very avant-garde spiritual center, and then I knew that my job was different, and I, now I give inspirational talks, and I do celebration of life, I teach havening. So I give to various different organizations who support my spiritual growth and unfoldment. That's where I give. And the important thing is that we give to be a steady, conscious, committed giver. Give consciously and thoughtfully and not just of your money. Give to all around you. Give of your love. Give of your interest. Give of your time. Give of your possessions. Give of your talents. And especially give of your loving presence. That's the most wonderful thing we can do. You know, our highest value, I believe, in 1997, I taught values clarification with La Vida Worldwide Ministries. That was so life-changing. 
And I really understood our first most important connection is to God within. And then it is our connection to one another. And so give of your loving presence that you be present with someone. Give of your willingness to be present and to listen to another. And know that whatever you give and however you give, it will always come back multiplied. Because that is the law of life. I'd like to close with some affirmations of abundance and supply. And if you've been watching me at all on Facebook on Mondays, I do Monday Mindful Moments. I've been doing a lot of havening. Haven is a place of safety and comfort. There are three ways to haven and seven techniques. And we're going to do spiritual affirmation havening. This is one way to haven. Stroking downward only on your face. Rubbing your palms together is another. And stroking downward on your shoulders. Havening will and will create serotonin and delta waves. So even doing it just now for this next minute or so, you're going to feel a difference. So I'm going to say an affirmation. I invite you to repeat it silently to yourself. The creator of all that is, is the one and only source of my supply. I'm always abundantly supplied with constructive, creative ideas. Since the creator of all that is is my God power, it is infinite. Love is infinite. Wisdom is infinite. Abundance is infinite. Opportunities are infinite. My good is infinite. I am abundantly prospered. My life is a joyous, loving, enriching experience. Joyous experience. Good. I accept my good today. I am the light. I am the love. I am the truth. I am. And so it is. Namaste. Thank you.